dick plague, that ain't it. No, that ain't but it. But I'd rather have about any other type of plague than mm-hmm. the dick plague. You don't want the dick plague. Because that dick plague was also a brain plague. That dick right. plague made your brain not Yeah, hit. that was uh, what happened And your to, hair fall uh, out, which is what we're talking about. But, dude, Al Capone. That, dick, that dick plague fucked all your shit up. No, yeah, syphilis, man. That's what Al Capone was on. Like, yeah. you know, and he was just. A, his brain was rot. His brain was rot. Yeah. Yeah, syphilis don't hit. No, syphilis don't Y'all hit. Y'all heard it here last. Everybody, syphilis don't hit. Syphilis don't hit. We've always said that. Man, yeah, you, I've been pretty we've always, staunch yeah. anti-syphilis my entire I've life. I've always said syphilis don't mm-hmm. hit. Don't want it. <laughs> hey, Airheads. Welcome back uh, here in Airstream Studios. It's putting on airs. I'm Trey. That's Corey. What's up, Corey? How you doing, buddy? I'm good. It's fun day. Uh, fun day. People, it is, it's Saturday. I that might I interpreted that as I heard you say fun day, and I thought you were doing a Sunday yeah, fun yeah. day thing. You, you so know, it's so funny that you yeah. say that. The, the, and I, so I was like, no, you dummy. So it's Saturday. She then just, I realized you didn't even mean that. <laughs> the lead singer of I'm the Bangles. You, All right. The he, lead. He heard it the same way. The lead singer of the Bangles just tweeted today. She goes, you know what? You follow the lead singer of the Bangles? Jason Isbell retweeted her. Oh, okay, all right. She well, just not tw- there's anything wrong with following. No, the lead of course singer not. The Bangles. I, well, no, I do. Well, I do follow you her do now because yeah, Jason okay. Isbell right. So the lead she, singer of the Bangles. This is funny because I didn't even mean to tee you up for this, but she yeah. literally just tweeted this today. She goes, "I'll be honest with you guys. I have to admit, actually, Saturday is my fun day." Okay. All yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So that, there you go. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. It, yeah, it, it is a good point. It just made fun. It made sense in the meter. Well, can I ask? Why did you say today is fun day? Just because you're having fun? I said today is a fun day. I didn't say oh, today okay. is fun day. I said it sounded to- like, all right. Yeah. I no. thought you said, like, it's fun day. I just said today is a fun day, but you might not have heard the A. Okay. All I just right, was going to okay. say today's a fun day because to- <laughs> today is a fun it day. It is a fun day. Today is a fun day. Yeah, right. But it's not fun day. No, it's not. Well, but Saturday I mean, or be fun day. It's fun day. day. Yeah, right. right. I'm with the, she's, I'm the lead singer of the Bengals has said that that is fun day. I'm with Mama Bengal. I said that because to 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 give people a, um, a behind the scenes on like the sausage being made, because everybody knows at this point that we record these in batches. Yeah. This is actually our third episode of the day, mm-hmm. and I think there's a lot of things that I could be doing where if I was on my third of it of the day, You'd I'd be, be like, done. God damn it. But I want to do four. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm having a blast because today, it's, it's a, my fun day. It's a fun day. <laughs> I don't have to run day. I hate yeah. that song, though. That's the worst one. I love that song. That's you don't like the that song? song. What, uh, what, uh, keep, like, what, uh, 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 uh that's I mean uh, I don't know we might get in trouble for this but. Sunday oh well I feel like Cho's so good we might get day. flagged oh, 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 where I don't have to run day yeah, but what? I feel like the bots are gonna flag us because Cho is they doing will. it so, he hits so hard but literally what I, what is that that's uh what that's is the that? Bengals just another Manic Monday. Just, it's a Prince Monday. Manic Monday. Manic Monday. Oh, Prince, and it's by the Bengals, well, so that's have to run okay. The, I just hey. now got the whole thing. Oh, yeah. She was it's, twi- it's yeah. about a lyric from their song. Their song I yeah. thought she was just quoting no. or, or making a joke about no. like Sunday. Because in fun that, day, she says, actually, Sunday is my fun day. Okay. And so the tweet today was, All right. I got to admit, Saturday okay. is actually my fun day. Well, I'm this was so fun. glad. You just had a me moment. finally got there with all that because. Another manic Monday. You know, oh, because well, you know, people called like Sunday Fun, fun day. day. Yeah. And I thought she was we just, used to have Sunday I thought fun she days. was just making a joke about that. No. But that makes it hit She's way the harder. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. You know, Prince, thank you for doing that. You're you know, Prince wrote that song? No, I but believe I believe it. it. I he, believe it. I think there's a few uh, jams that Prince wrote that he didn't do. That, Look up shit that Prince wrote that we don't know. Type yeah. that in. Yeah. Pr- shit that Prince, Prince wrote, wrote that we don't know. That Trey and Corey don't know. That hits. That hits. Yeah, stuff I don't, don't want to hear wrote, the stuff that he wrote that didn't Stuff that Prince hit. wrote that hits that, 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 that Trey and Corey don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. while you're doing that, we'll talk about this. So, all right. I forgot to do this last episode, so I'll make sure and do it now, and then we'll just keep shooting the shit. On this edition of Putting On Airs, I'm going to do my Venn diagram thing. Some of y'all might think this one's a bit of a reach, but we'll get there. I promise you. Fancy people, rednecks, 
uh, white trash where it overlaps. I'm gonna be talking about wigs. I immediately got wigs, and I'm you know what? I'm gonna give it up to her. This was my wife's idea. She suggested this segment. Hey, Katie Crowder, everybody. Katie Crowder, Katie Crowder. 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 Also, Katie Crowder, our set designer. Yeah, not just designer. She built the fucking set. Absolutely. Shout out, Uh, Katie. So yeah, that was Katie's idea, and then Pro Cho, history professor Cho. Is uh, what are we talking about? The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, one of the most butterfly effect shits that has ever happened in the world. Because I know on the last episode we talked about that, what with the mm. abdication and everything. There were a couple episodes back. Whatever. Also, I love that dude's song, Take Me Out. Oh, that it's was great. a good song. Take me out. Yeah. 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 It's a shit. Song hits. So that guy hits. Yeah. All right. We'll talk about him a little later. Uh, but yeah, before we get to all that, let's just shoot the shit for a bit. I found this story, Cho, that I think you'll appreciate because I feel like it checks a lot of boxes for you, and it's pretty wild. It is. Uh, and it has to do with rich people, rich people being uh, wild and dumb and mm-hmm. I would say frivolous. Yeah. And I can't believe I never heard of this. So apparently- Frivolity, huge for them. Right. So apparently, uh, the dude that founded Domino's, right, his name is Tom Monahan, And he should have his own day. You think so? I like Domino's. Domino's I, is fine. I always thought it was funny that they like they went they spent millions of dollars on an ad campaign that was basically them saying like, "Listen, we, we know, know we didn't hit. We get okay, it. Le- we didn't hit for years. We didn't. You hit. ain't gotta tell us we didn't hit. We didn't hit, and everybody knows it. But what we're saying is now though we do hit. I think it's brilliant, <laughs> like, and it worked. Yeah, right. Because by the way, it's true. They yeah. didn't hit for a long time, and for my money, we because we have a dumb now. Actually, Pizza Hut, we're not sponsored by any of these people. But y'all holler. I think Pizza Hut's pan pizza is probably the best commercial pizza there is on the planet. Because there's a cup of oil, one yep. entire cup of oil in a cast in iron it, pan. Yeah, yeah. But Domino's across the board, like they their pasta, they're like taking back pastas or whatever they do. I mean. I got love for Domino's. No, I do too. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're pretty good. And it's fair price. It's fair price. They both beat the shit out of Papa John's. Oh, dude. Papa John's can suck oh, no, my right. fucking dick. Unless they want to unless uh-huh. sponsor, unless they sponsor a Shaq. Yeah, Shaq. What's yeah. up, dog? Yeah. We'll do some Papa John's shit. So anyway, the owner, Dom, the owner and founder of Domino's, Tom Monahan. all right, he founded Domino's, made a shitload of pizza money, mm-hmm. right? So much pizza money. And he used that pizza money to spend it on mostly average rich people or your standard rich people boats shit, like houses super expensive cars, cars boats houses all that shit the oh, detroit yeah. tigers he definitely got some new teeth the detroit tigers oh word That's i didn't a, know that yeah apparently yes um but domino's doesn't have a detroit style pizza but so yeah, well, that's Jet. That's Jets game, baby. Jets pizza. Shout out Jets pizza, future future sponsor. Of, Are they still around? Putting on air. I hope so. If Dude. they're not, I'm fucking. I'm upset. Jets was the shit. Son. Jets pizza is great. Detroit Detroit style pizza is Detroit up? style pizza. In my opinion, I've talked about this a lot. Not on the podcast, just like at my house screaming at the walls, <laughs> because like it to me. Uh, Do- uh, Detroit style pizza is the Kobe Bryant of pizzas. In that, and now, now LeBron has cemented his legacy, sure, whatever, but when LeBron first came out, it was immediately, who's the best, LeBron or Jordan? Who's the second best player of all time? And I'm sitting there going like, are y'all forgetting that Kobe Bryant is sitting here existing? Preach, you don't brother. Know, I'm like, are you, do you, I know. Now, now, now LeBron is doing this thing. I'm not saying right. that. But, but when he first, but when he career, first came out, I, know, dude, I, was, I like, was saying the same shit at parties, I, too, the I was whole like, time. I was like, Kobe Bryant's still here. Like, right. what, what are you talking about? Five yeah, yeah. championships yeah, with, yeah. with the same coach. What are we fucking talking about? Detroit-style pizza is that in that everybody goes, is it Chicago or is it New York style? And I'm like, yeah, they both hit, but like, it can fucking Detroit pizza not even be in the conversation. Well, so in that way, I kind of feel like Detroit pizza is like more like the like the Charles Barkley or Hakeem Olajuwon of right. pizza, where it's because like, those two are the clear. But where it's like Detroit people, style pizza hits harder than Chicago style pizza. I'll tell yeah, you I right fucking you. now, and I it's, love Chicago oh, style pizza, yeah, but it ain't I'm pizza. I'm sorry, Chicago fans. It's a fucking casserole. It's a pizza casserole, and that's fine. It's, it's really good casserole. if you yeah. want a lasagna with some fucking bread on well, it. Well, it ain't a lasagna. It's, it's a close pizza. to it's a, a lasagna. Pizza. No, it's not. 
No, it's not. Well, it's like no a, it's like, it's the like bread a, is the it's noodles. Like a pizza pot pie thing. Okay, there you go. And it, it does, there you go. but without the it's, top, it smashes. It it's hits. Awesome. It does hit. But it's but not, I, a, dude. I'm with you. To me, a like, piece of pizza should be something that you can pick up and walk over here and yeah. eat. And you can't do that with that shit. So to me, Detroit style pizza to me is number two because I am a New York till I die guy. But I've always felt like they didn't get enough love. And to, isn't I think a lot of people don't even know. Isn't doesn't Little Caesars have the Detroit style? Well, they do. And right? do you, hey, do you know what Detroit? I mean, but a hot you know, and ready. Is do you know like, why oh, no, Detroit right style right. pizza is what it is and Square? No, I mean I know that it's Square. It's got the charred right cheese around the. It's yeah, got the right charred cheese around guy. the side. And, and the reason that it is like that, Detroit. Oh, what is Detroit most known for? Cars. Yeah, black people. There you go. <laughs> Cars and yes. black people. Yeah. And I actually think that this was a black person that did this. I don't remember their names, but so there was a family in Detroit, right? And this woman, I'm, again, I'm pretty sure it was a black woman, was wanting to cook a pizza, but they were poor and they didn't have any like pans or no, nothing. Like they didn't have shit. This is a true story. You I swear to God. Okay, I swear right. to God. I'm they in. didn't have shit, right? So her husband was like, I got this. He goes to the car factory where no, he's. I shut swear to God, up. he goes to the car factory where he's working, and he gets the steel square pan that they put the nuts and bolts in. Brought it home, and she put the dough and shit in that, and Bro. then it became. I swear to God, what? I swear to God, try, look that's it up. incredible. Look it up. That's why that George is how people a began. wonderful little slice of Americana right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is, I'm telling you, that is fantastic. And by the way, I read that one time. If it ain't true, it fucking should be. Yeah, you're right about that. Without a doubt. I don't know. Uh, Russ, I don't if know. you find out that it ain't true, keep your mouth shut. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, I, well, I'm not. Like a legacy that. could begin at some other place, but I'm telling you that that's, that's what I heard. It was like in a Ford I like that nuts story. and bolts pan, and she made it in the oven, and that's why it was square and deep. Do you know that same story, but for Nashville hot chicken? No. So this woman, probably a black woman, mm -hmm. uh, almost certainly a black woman, and I mean that in a good way. Hell yeah, I, if it's I, I always food. mean that in a good yeah, way, right. for the record. Yeah, that's right. never a bad thing. I'm just saying, I uh, had this husband who was a dickhead, mm -hmm. and he wanted like spicy fried chicken, right? And it was never hot enough for him. Oh, you so know? she was fucking him so up. So she was just like, all right, motherfucker. Right. So she makes all this cayenne pepper in with a bunch of oil and shit yeah. and just dumps it on it. Like, I'll show his ass. And, and, he, and he was like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, girl. That's what's up. You did it this time. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, oh, and that was Hattie B. And again, I mean that all with love. Nothing but love. Okay. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Spite chicken. Spite chicken. Yeah. Nashville spite chicken. Yeah. I fucking love that shit. No, it's great, man. So, uh, so Domino's owner, Tom Monahan, right? Um, made all that pizza money, bought the Detroit Tigers and all this other rich people shit. But apparently, Cho, and this is where this story is going to start to not have for you. He don't help. Toward the end of his life. Oh, he's dead. I don't know that he's dead. I'm just saying as he got older, he found who? The Lord. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So many hitters been claimed by the Lord, dude. So I don't want Christian well, I don't, I don't, pizza. I don't know that this guy hit, but whatever. He, he oh, found dude, the he, I mean, he hit. He owned the fucking Detroit Lions and so, created dominoes. So this, what I'm about to say, could super hit for me. I wish more billionaires did this. He apparently made a vow of poverty and started selling off all his assets one by one. So That's what's up. Visible. That does hit. And I'm not saying he didn't do nothing good with it, but he took that money and put it towards his goal was using it to save as many souls as he possibly could on planet Earth. He spent two hundred and fifty million dollars to start this the Lord community in Florida called Ava Maria, which was devoted to, you know, the Lord. Found Instead it, of just feeding them like Jesus would. Right. Founded in 2005 uh, in Southern Florida. It's home to Ava Maria University, which is a Christian university. And um, and it's like, but the thing is, it's still just like a gated Florida community. Right. But everybody in there is a Christian. Christian. But keeping all the poor Christians out. Right, yeah, because Christians poor hate Christians the poor. Yeah, Jesus hated the poor. Oh, he hated everybody them. Lepers didn't that. like them. Whores wanted them to go away. Don't wash my feet, bitch. Right, so this dude spent all his pizza, not all this pizza money, but he spent a huge chunk of his pizza money on founding a, like, like Jesusville in Florida. Mm. 
What you think about that? I think that that's the worst thing I've ever heard coming out of Florida <laughs> and think about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, that's just gross. Like, that's such a crazy misuse and misinterpretation of, of what Christianity of yeah. is. Like, we don't have to go too far into weeds on it, but like, I grew up Christian, mm -hmm. you know, real big Christian. And the reason that I got out of the church is because I got old enough to actually start internalizing what the book meant versus what the people were doing that believed in the book. And I was like, are y'all are y'all not reading the same shit that I'm reading? Like this guy who y'all are like, you got to love him because he died on a cross for you. I'm like, yeah, word. OK, true. You know, but like he said to do all this other stuff and like y'all ain't doing none of that shit. And matter of fact, all the people that Jesus seemed to have hung out with and were the ones he was trying to help out, y'all are like, no, they don't hit. We only want Christians who have a middle class suburban upbringing. Right. And it just blew my mind. So like, no, that's fucking gross. Like he should have just given the money to the homeless shelters. That's what Jesus would have done. And again, and I'm not I'm not saying that. He didn't also do. He some may of have, that. yeah. But spending for the record, him giving away all his but, money, no matter what, like to, him get, getting rid of it, is not selfish. Like that's him doing something that he thought was right. So I'm not going to slide him for that. This looks like some kind of that's it gay conversion. Look at Vatican. that shit, Trey. Right. Well, that's see, some that's what, Mormon well, shit. I'm saying, yeah, yes, right. It's cultish. Yeah, right. Like, it's like a Christian cult in Florida. Scientology shit. And spending... He was getting a tax break on it. Spending a quarter of a billion dollars on that, uh, that just, that ain't it. You know what I mean? A quarter of a billion dollars. No, that ain't it. All them homeless people up in Detroit. And they won't they let them in there. For, right, yeah, and they ain't allowed in there, yes. No, it's gross, man. It's like when fucking... Uh, Who's that sack of shit that this guy right here? He's from Texas. He's that preacher that he just off. Joel oh, Joel Osteen. Osteen. Yeah. Yeah, when all the floods and shit came and he toothy was like. Toothy ass motherfucker. Yeah, well, he's just like. I, I, he's the, so toothy, the, the dude. Flood, the floods are coming and yeah. we're going to lock this church up. Y'all yeah. can't be in here. Like, it's just, it's so, like, again, what they're saying and what the book says is just completely two different things. And that's what bothers me about it. So, uh. I I've, feel like look at that you toothy look ass up, motherfucker. Yeah, look at how look, toothy he is. He bro. looks like a, I, I don't mean this in the. Uh, he looks like a shapeshifter. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh wait, is that like a I, Jew thing? Or yes, something? but I don't mean it in that way. I know you don't. What I mean Clearly is that not. looks like an alien wearing human skin. Yeah, like yes. his face looks all stretched out and shit like that. Like yeah. you remember in Men in Black, like, this is what hits for humans. Is yeah. if you look like this. You remember in but mo but regular humans are like that ain't it. You remember you in, not look like that. You remember in Men in Black when Vincent D'Onofrio pulled his skin back? He like does that? look like that. That You're looks right. like that. Fucking sugar so water. That's what I'm a yeah. sugar water. Yeah. Yeah. One of Vincent D'Onofrio's finest performances. He was by wearing the way. a suit, like like an Egger suit. An Egger. An he was Egger wearing suit. an Egger suit. He wanted sugar. That's Egger's wife. <laughs> who I was? Kinda, yeah. Who was? What was her uh, most famous role, in my opinion? What the bus driver from yeah, Forrest Gump? You're right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Get on here, Forrest. Yeah. 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 Uh. So. Well, now you know me. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I surreptitiously maybe not so surreptitiously looked up to fact check what does surreptitiously myself, mean like in secret in secret trying right. to be in secret yeah, surreptitiously looked up. I learned so much from producing I've, I've always heard it and I've always felt like I knew but I wanted to ask uh, uh, that Nashville hot chicken story mm -hmm. and it's like I was I was right but it wasn't a he, the dude in the story wasn't mad about the chicken not being hot enough what he was doing was pork and whores right okay and yeah, his old lady, his old lady, thought it was about the chicken. To no, to teach him a lesson. Oh right. To like, I'll show his ass, but not because the chicken ain't hot enough. Because I the would, pussy wasn't good enough. Or I whatever. would give anything. Like, and, if, but then, but she did that, and he still the end of it. Whoo wee! That was all. That's how it went. I would kill if when Amber got mad at me, she, she made she you fried really hot some chicken. chicken. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Be Where fucking are those awesome. angels? Gee, I'll show this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make him the hittingest chicken he's ever had in his life. Yeah, that's so fucking funny. Yeah, man. Okay, so my fuck. wife just farts and looks at me. Mm -hmm. Fuck Joel Osteen. He don't hit. So no, he don't.
it's july it's hotter than hell but it's time to bring that summer heat where it really counts and that's into the bedroom because by god the temperatures ain't the only thing that's going to be rising this summer talking about your wiener because this episode is sponsored by blue chew guys confidence can take you far in life we all know that but it also comes to handy in the bedroom especially when it comes time to step up to the plate aka the nether regions of your lover, and that's where Blue Chew comes in. Trey Neal, tell them all about it. Yeah, step up to the nether regions plate with your wiener bat. Am I right? Uh, <laughs> Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or just be ready whenever an opportunity, a sexy opportunity, arises. The process is simple. You sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you will receive your prescription within days. That's the best part, y'all. It's all done down there on the internet there. No visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy where you see your high school teacher looking at you and judging you and whatnot. No. Blue Chew's tablets are made right here in the U.S. of A., prepared and shipped directly to your door in a very discreet package, and Cho loves them. Oh, my God. I love it when the uh, when the postman comes and rings the doorbell. I know it's been a proper ding-dong ditch. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Get that white envelope. My wife knows that it's time to get her back blown out once again. And again, this is not saying that my wiener don't hit. My wiener hits fine. It's just that with Blue Chew, my wiener hits more. So why wouldn't you want your wiener to hit more? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> you wouldn't not want your wiener to hit more, <laughs> you know? So listen, guys, here's what you could do. You, If you could benefit from a little extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we got a special deal for our listeners. You try Blue Chew free. I said free. I did. Mm -hmm. When you use our promo code POA at checkout, you just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code POA to receive your first month for free. Mm -hmm. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. And giving me a big old hard winner. Who's going to take care of your family if something happens to you? What would they do without your income? If you don't have a plan, you need to go to goliathlife.com. Get a quick quote for more than 20 carriers. You don't even have to leave the house. If you need a medical exam, they'll send somebody to your house or office. You're in total control. You pick the rates, you pick the payments, you pick the terms. You're in total control, but it gives you and your family peace of mind. What if something happens to your income? Hurry to goliathlife.com. All right, I guess we'll get into the subject at hand here. I'm talking about wigs, mm. Joe. I would love. I'm to. talking about wigs. So, all right, I said it might be kind of a, you know, might seem like a bit of a reach because the fancy people wear wigs today. Some of them do. We'll get into that in a little bit. But there you go. See, there you go. You didn't. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's perfect. You can Had see one on that, hand. You yeah, can see how that dude. hits. Yeah, because yeah. you fancy and yeah. trash. So I'm fancy and to... trash and bald. And bald. And bald. So bald. Is this on right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Where I think you go, this? You, no, I think you've, I mean, I can't tell just this? by looking. Is I mean, it needs right? to be kept up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's it just not, don't hit. Yeah, I mean, the wig can hit. No, I know, but I'm saying it's not. Because it's all in my face. That's my John Snow wig, everybody. From uh, Do I look fine? My highly acclaimed. Uh, it is highly acclaimed, Trey. Old internet video series. Oh, that's fine. God damn, where I m joked about Game of Thrones. It's good. You should go listen to that, too. Self-promotion. But I anyway. Think, I think it looks... I kind of look like... Um, what's the motherfucker from Beauty and the Beast? Uh, Gaston? Gaston? Gaston. 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 Yeah. Gaston. Uh, oh, nobody, what's the, what's his I line? Know. Nobody makes eggs like Gaston. Gaston yeah. It's not. It ain't He's makes as eggs. He's as big as it's a house. Yeah. yeah, that's him. Yeah, that is him. Yeah. So, Gaston. all right. Fancy people today. There's plenty of rich people that fuck with wigs, of course, but it's not like a fancy people culture thing. But, of course, it used to be very famously for a long time. You think of famous people or you think of fancy people from a certain period of history mm -hmm. you automatically picture them powdered wig with a wig on right. a powdered wig for the dudes and then also you think of marie antoinette type shit like wigs was huge right i'm sure i bet you know this but like do you know what what 
spurred all that like where why they were fucking with powdered wigs the aristocracy and why it became like a fancy people thing in the first place i know that i've known this before but i can't think of it right now but i feel like we've talked about this we have syphilis before oh right syphilis so they i was gonna say before you tee that up can i tell you that i was probably a sophomore or junior in high school before i was like Oh, oh, that's not George Washington's Them's hair. wigs. Yeah. You know what? You know what? What'd you just say? That's not George Washington's hair? That is George Washington's hair. Oh, really? Hair. Because- He had a real one? No. Oh, shit. No. Most of those pictures, the founding fathers, George Washington in particular, that's his hair, but they powdered it. Powdered it, it right. With like hair flour. Because that's for crabs whatever. and stuff, you said? It was just like, it had become, it was the fashion of the time. Yeah. But the reason it became the fashion was because- Hair hits, sorry, but like hair hits. I know hits, it does. Yeah, hair hits. It hits for rich people to have hair. It hits for all people to have hair. And white makes you look distinguished? Yeah. Old? Like you're wise? Now that I think about it, it's so definitely funny, that. The origin, Cause those the guys, origin cause my of My thing it. is I always thought those dudes were way fucking older than they actually were because they right. all had white hair. Right. In my mind, I was like, yeah, they have white hair. They're fucking old. And it's like but George, so, George Washington was in his 30s. So it started with European aristocracy a little bit before that, like eight, 17th and 18th century. And it was because syphilis was running wild like the new plague mm-hmm. over there. And that dick plague and hair it. and dick plague that ain't it. No, that ain't it. But I'd rather have about any other type of plague than mm-hmm. the dick plague. You don't want the dick plague because that dick plague was also a brain plague. That dick right. plague made your brain not. Yeah, hit. that was uh, what happened. And your to, hair fall uh, out, which is what we're talking about. But dude, Al Capone. That dick, that dick plague fucked all your shit up. No, yeah, syphilis, man. That's what Al Capone was on. Like, yeah, you know, and fuck, he was just a, his brain was rot. His brain was rot. Yeah. Yeah. Syphilis hit. don't hit. No, syphilis don't Y'all hit. Y'all heard it here last. Everybody, syphilis don't hit. Syphilis. Don't hit. We've always said that. Man, yeah, you, I've been pretty we've always, staunch yeah. anti-syphilis my entire I've life. I've always said syphilis don't mm, hit. Don't want it. Oh, so, God damn. Oh, Lord. Rush, you ain't got to do it that. Off. Ugh, Jesus gross. Christ. So, syphilis is exploding everywhere. Hair hits. Part of what syphilis does makes your hair fall out in patches. And they were like, well, I can't hit if I ain't got hair insert wigs here wigs come and now like we talked before about that woman who was like a trendsetter like the ig influencer over time who yeah. got her uh leg smushed so by she a limp. horse cart or whatever so she well, limped no so all the other bitches was like we got a limp too that's yeah. what the hitters do right <laughs> well that's what happened with wigs like all these fucking, like oh this guy's got a wig i gotta get a wig <laughs> yes exactly that means so you now, fuck so now <laughs> Right. Well, I don't know. I think they hid the fact, like, it's that was a part. That, they acted like, no, this is just what this hits. Just hits. This is yeah, just what right, hits. Right, right, right. And everybody right. was just like, that must be what hits. Right. And now they're all wearing wigs. The real reason was because they fucked, you know, got the dick plague n- nastily and yeah. got the dick plague. Right? Yeah. Because, like, I guess <laughs> they didn't have, like, I thought they was already putting, like, Sheep innards around their dicks at that time. Yeah, but the, maybe the not. condoms, dude. Yeah. Do you know? Maybe how, they weren't doing that yet. So I my, didn't get into the like the dick covering part of the whole thing. Speaking of, but, we were talking about Christians, so this kind of goes back to when I was telling you I was a kid in church. So my Sunday school teacher, uh, one of my Sunday school teachers when I was in middle school, he used to be a Navy shipman, okay. and well, I'm in sixth grade. Water business, baby. I'm in. He bought that water business. So he boss. W- he was in the he was in the armed forces, and so he's talking about going over to. He it's, he was a navy shipman. He he was he ain't was, that most of them. I just said it. Oh, okay, I, 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 I just, was about to say <laughs> this so, is how he presented. So he, he wasn't no average navy boatman. He, I, he this or is a how navy he, fucking sloopman. This is just how he presented himself. Raftman. I was a navy shipman. Yeah. You know, a raftman. I mean? oh, hell no. So. We wasn't no Rathman trash. Yeah, I'm just going, a, <laughs> I'm just going by what this motherfucker. He a so he, so one day in middle school Sunday school class, I'm in sixth grade. He was the assistant Sunday school teacher. And by the way, Hailed. there's there's not a more worthless human For being sure. on earth than someone who is the assistant Sunday school teacher <laughs> yeah, of a middle right. school class. 
So he's just sitting over there. When the youth pastor like walked up and sat backwards on a chair or whatever, did that guy walk up and put his hat on him and hand him his guitar? He tuned the youth pastor's guitar or whatever. So our (laughs) our teacher that works Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Our actual Sunday school teacher had just gotten out of jail. And he was one of those. He was one of those like. For what? Oh, I don't know. But he was one okay. of those. He was one of those Saul to Paul type dudes that they were trying to create that narrative of the church. Like he used to be this, but now he's good. He would sit, his whole thing when we were in Sunday school. He had a knife, and he would walk. What, <laughs> dude? What? He, your ex-con Sunday school teacher used knife. to bring a fucking butterfly knife to Sunday school. And, an absolute butterfly. Shut so, the no, no. fuck up. When oh, we yeah. so when we got our Christmas presents from him for yeah. Sunday school, it was daggers. He got us all oh, a dude, dagger. What? He got us all a dagger. So, so yeah, this is so. You gonna need this when the revolution comes. I'm gonna get this back to syphilis. Uh, I promise you. I promise you, I'm gonna get this back to syphilis. But like now that we're talking about him, he would have a knife, and so like that was his like pointer when he's making he's doing this shit. But then when he would, but then (laughs) no, no, no. but then when (laughs) I believe you, but this guy was fishing for Boy Scouts. But then (laughs) when he would make a really good like fire and brimstone point, he would. And slant and oh stab God. the knife into the ground and stick it into the ground <laughs> and pick it up. Which, such... by the way, it could have bounced up and hit one of us <laughs> this in the fucking head. Is such a perfect example of that thing that's happened over our, the course of our relationship over and over again, where it's like, how have I known you this long right. and this has never come up? You realize, yeah, how insane this comically is. insane so, all of that is, right? So again, this I'm dude a- gets out of prison. They put him in charge of the kids in yeah. Sunday school, yeah. and his pointer in class is a fucking butterfly. Knife. He won the Iron Man contest, by the way, boxing in Chattanooga. He like qualified to go to nationals boxing. Come right out of prison. I'm going to get to syphilis. I'm going to get to syphilis. I swear to God. He also, that Christmas, uh, when he gave us all them daggers, we had a Christmas party and they were like, oh, what are you going to do with the Christmas party? Most people go to Chuck E. Cheese. He's like, we're just going to go downtown and hang out. So we just go downtown and hang yeah. out, and he's walking us through. Thought I'd take him Skid Row. We go to going on. we go to this pizza place that's just downtown in like a pretty rough part of Chattanooga, and he's walking us through an alley, and he's just like, "All right, guys, uh, y'all just knives have- out. <laughs> y'all got your knives right. Y'all <laughs> open those. He was like, get your knives out. We're they're tell- coming. He tells us he goes, we're about to go to this pizza place, but I gotta take a piss real quick. So he goes in this alley, and he pulls down his pants, and he starts pissing, and all of a sudden you hear, whoa, whoa. Whoa, what the fuck? He was just pissing no. on a homeless dude. Corey, he was pissing what? on a fucking homeless dude. Like just, on purpose? No, no, no. He didn't know he was there. No. <laughs> dude, I thought no. you were. No, no, no. Why? I thought you were. He was walking no. down the street. No, 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 no. <laughs> homeless people hit for him. He was a, okay. he was a good guy. Okay, all right. So okay. as soon as that guy was like, whoa, he goes, he goes oh, 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 I'm sorry. He goes, guys, I'm peeing on a homeless guy. And so we're like, what the fuck? And so then we go to the pizza. Pastor Terry pissed on a hobo with his knife Paul. out. Yeah. All right. uh, <laughs> so anyways. He's the he's the teacher. The assistant teacher was he never really said much. He just kind of sat there. And then one day, Paul's in the middle of giving his like Sunday school sermon. <laughs> he's like fucking Pastor Paul's prison bitch or whatever. It's like, yeah, you don't yeah. speak until spoken. He to was him, a he was a middle class kind of. He was shine a, my knife. He was a fireman that used to be in the navy, and he's just sitting there barrel chested. And he's just sitting there, and Paul's in the middle of something. All of a sudden, this guy just gets up and he goes. Paul, if you don't mind, Lord's laid something on my heart. <laughs> Here we go. I just got, and Paul's like, you preach Jesus it to him, Pastor Christ. Scott. Go ahead. Yeah. L- lay it on him. And he goes. Witness, buddy. He goes, I used to be, we're sixth grade. We are in sixth fucking grade. And this is coming from, he's he's up there talking about Zacchaeus and the tax man. This comes out of nowhere. He goes, I was in the Navy. We went to the Philippines. And I'm not allowed to tell you much of what went on in the Philippines. But I'm going to tell you that I had my share of women in the Philippines. <laughs> we all did. Sucked a couple of their dicks. <laughs> and, we're, and we're in sixth grade. We're in sixth grade. So we don't really, we can't even concept. Yeah. We don't even really know that much about sex right now. But he's sitting there talking about it. He goes, we passed them around, them mm-hmm. Filipino oh, women. They were so hor- horny, I've he go- always heard. Yeah. And he goes. They're so horny. And, he, and he's basically, this whole thing is him trying to tell us not to have sex. Right. right? And he goes, I don't know if y'all know about syphilis and the clap. And we're all just like. We don't. We're in sixth grade, but we're learning it right now yeah. from the assistant of a lunatic. Yeah. Right. So he's sitting there and he he walks out. He, go, he goes, he goes, I'm gonna, I'll be right back. And so the 
Paul's like, okay, well, I'll fill the time until he comes back. He comes back with a stump. Like he had gone outside and got a Aren't stump. Aren't y'all in downtown Chattanooga? No, 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 no. Somewhere? This is oh, when okay. we're in class. Okay, all right. This is when we're in class. That was a side note. Okay, all right. This I'm is sorry. when we're in Sunday school. I thought school. this whole thing was happening no. under an overpass. No, no, no. <laughs> this, no, this is when we're in class. And, and Paul I stole that hobo stump and brought it back. This is when we're in class and Paul's making points and throwing the knife into the yeah. fucking ground and shit. He goes out and I don't know where he finds a fucking stump outside of the church. He comes back and he just got this stump. And he just fucking lays it on the ground in front of us. And he goes, y'all see that right there? And we're just like, yeah, stump. And he goes, back in my day when you was in the Navy and you got the clap or you got syphilis. I know where this is going, I think. What Go would ahead. happen was Dude, our... I've heard this before. He goes, our captain or whatever <laughs> yeah. would take your... And he said weenie. Mm. And it's so funny because like now he's got to clean up the yeah, language. Yeah. They'd take your weenie. They'd sit it on that stump. They'd take a mallet hammer, yep, yep, and they'd yep. hit your weenie, and all that pus would come out the end okay. of your weenie. So don't none of y'all have sex. And then he now, sat down, and we were just so, like, what the fuck now, was that? That last part of it, I also was told. Yeah, right. And I, I was told. Oh, my I, God. I this like, is some Southern shit. I've I never like heard I this one. I feel like I remember that being called, I think, the bullhead clap, I think. What? It's like it wasn't just a regular clap. You get the bullhead clap. They got to put hit your weenie with they a mallet hit hammer. Your with a oh, hammer, and damn. you don't want that, boys. Yeah, Jesus. no, that don't hit. So but he stay just, in school. But again, then he just finished and, and praise the Lord. And then and then Paul was just like, <laughs> so anyway, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. You know, he climbed up man. in a sycamore tree to see what he could see. So I said Bro. all that. That was about syphilis. That's I'm sorry for the tangent. No, that's okay. I honestly have little to no idea where i'm at but that's all right by the way here's pastor here's pastor scott (laughs) yeah yeah look at that motherfucker no do your thing i want to hear more he got that dick v uh russ do you got the time over there just because i i've got we're we're at about about 40 shit okay all right okay all right good let it ride i know we good but i'd be a short show so okay fuck so they started doing that shit because they had syphilis and it became fancy and it was a sign of upper crust society. Wigs, that's what we're they talking had about. Wigs. They had wigs on. <laughs> then the French Revolution happened and all of a sudden it's like, you don't want to be fancy no more. You know why? Because that's how you get your head chopped off. Right, that don't Right. Hit. So wigs started falling out of favor and by the time of the American Revolution, people weren't really fucking with powdered wigs anymore, but they were still powdering their hair though. Like right. the, white, the white hair part remained, but that was mostly that was their hair. And then... Um, you know, and then now today, wigs are not a sign of like social status or whatever, but there are plenty of hidden people who still fuck with wigs. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, mostly women. Like I found this. Well, I was, yeah. So, yes, I was going to get to the. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. The ultimate crossover between fancy people and trash people is, of course, Dolly Parton, who fucks with wigs heavily. Katie gave us a great quote last night. When we were talking about this. A quote from Dolly. It said, people, someone asked her, like, uh, you know, wh- what's the secret to how you do your hair? How long and does it go, take? How yeah. does it take to do your hair? And she goes, I don't know. I'm never there when they do it. Yeah. <laughs> Because, yeah, because that's how Dolly Dolly rolls. So, unreal, um, man. But, I mean, I guess, you know, since we've bounced around and everything already, I just want to tell you uh, at least one thing about how I'm dumb. Russ, in the the dock, in the dock, uh, do you see that there's a link right there in the middle uh, where I say there's this weird ass company that, specializes in so pull this up okay so you see this show and uh hopefully y'all see it too i found this wig company look Ooh. luxury virgin, virgin human hair well yeah you don't wigs. want some twice fucked hair no dude you that don't want to be having hair that's been Sex fucked hair before. All... you don't want hair that's been pulled back Mm-mm. while their face is shoved into a pillow you need that Getting virgin choked. hair. no that ain't it. you thought the exact same thing i did oh really yeah right on. of course you did yeah i sent that to katie and i was like does this literally mean the hair of virgins oh that's just the company name this is no it's not the company name but i'm so you thought the same thing yeah of course it's i like did the hair of virgin because yeah, you know it's always that's like, a thing. like you know the blood of virgins, virgins head, yeah. if the blood throw them in the whale this is some like fucking medieval yeah, sounding right. shit if the blood of virgins hit the hair of virgins that's Must gotta hit. be the best hair yeah, of course so i thought these people were like we got wigs made from only virgin hair beat that everybody yeah, else right but i started most wig companies mention virgin hair. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And I texted Katie and she was like, uh, she was like, that, 
That just means the hair has never been chemically treated or dyed. We'll say the that. Hair is, but that, I mean, I think if you're a woman. You see virgin hair and you, yeah. you know what it and means. And we go to a dark place. But so, yeah, we hey, were guys, just like. But, uh, I mean, they're, are they modeling these wigs on real dolls? Those are definitely oh, they, they, dolls. They look like them, don't they? I, mean, but I know what he means. You mean what the, the. Is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Real doll, you, like sex dolls. Yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. Those are do definitely like sex dolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. Which, that's, for the record, that's a sponsorship, wild, please. <laughs> that's a wild <laughs> Japan. Shout out to real dolls. So, anyway, I was gonna then talk about trashy people in wigs, which we can go ahead and do. Let's Apparently, do it. the um, like the fucking you know, the higher the hair, the closer to God. Of you know, course, they used to tease up their hair and stuff like that. Yeah. Apparently, that sort of originated with wigs and Marie like Antoinette were, had that boat shit going on. So like on. high hair that hit. Yeah. Right? Right. And a lot of times hair is higher if there it's a wig or whatever. So that led to women teasing their own hair up and everything. But I remember like there's a lot of church women, especially a lot of church mammals in the oh, South. Oh yeah, my God, the beehive. Who fucks with wigs, dog. Hardcore. Like they got their wigs and they hit for them and I Sunday remember wig. and I remember you know how kids but dude, mm-hmm. I feel bad about it. I don't I I don't feel bad, but like I think about my mama cat, my grandma, right? I remember she got Biscuit a Biscuit making bitch, huh? Cat, <laughs> catfish. <laughs> catfish making this bitch you ever met in your entire life. But Biscuit's too, though. Lord, she could cook. Jesus. Lord. Jesus. She walked, Lord, so much Lord. Walked around her kitchen praying to Jesus mm-hmm. randomly. Jesus, this microwave, you know, fucking. <laughs> but hitting like a motherfucker, dude. Was anyway, she one that thought the microwave was like the devil? She thought some things was the devil, yeah. for sure. But she could cook like a motherfucker. But anyway, she got this uh this wig once and I still remember my my uh my first cousin Kenny Ray, Fremont Kenny Ray, you know, uh he he doing all right out there. Oh. No, he just you know, he'd been in and out of jail and whatnot. Yeah, right. It's meth, but he's Teacher doing okay. school. No, I love Kenny Ray. He's great. But he's my first Kenny cousin. Ray. Kenny Ray, that's right. God damn. Um, Kenny so Ray was like at this time he was probably six or seven. And uh, Mama Cat had just got this new wig and was like really feeling good about it mm-hmm. and walked in the room with Kenny Ray for the first time. And he goes, where did you get that wig at, <laughs> at like seven years old, you know? Because kids tell you, kids, right. yeah, they just cut they straight. Zero they oh, cut, that's what I'm sensitive exactly. about. Exactly, they cut Mulaney. straight through the bullshit. But yeah, a lot of you know, it's very southern mammal thing and just a white trash thing in general to have wigs or if not wigs, even like, if you have hair, even yeah, I would say extensions and waves and stuff like Katie. Oh, yeah. I don't know if this will for her. Katie got extensions out the ass. She Amber got, had she got waves point. and Katie got all that shit. Yeah, there's no shame in so that. So Amber, yeah. so like Amber, it's, a, it's very much a thing. But people. Nowadays, like back then, it was like you wore it openly to hit. Nowadays, people like act like it. It's like a secret now. Do you know what I mean? It's like you're not supposed to know, even yeah, if people it's supposed do to look know. Real. Yeah, but but, it's but back still, then it was like, no, look at my wig. But wigs still make it hit. Wigs still going strong. Amber That's used all I'm to saying. have a wig, um, and it was a pink wig. It was a super hot pink wig, and she would always wear it when she was like feeling extra dirty. She would put it on, and then I would. Uh, it did hit, and I would bang her in that wig, uh, and th- it does. And then I came up with this character <laughs> called Aunt Lita, and I started wearing that oh, wig that's the in the Lita video. Wig? I started wearing that wig in the video, and Amber's like, "You can't fuck me in that wig anymore." Of course and not. I was like, "Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but that's hilarious." So you came up with Aunt Lita, and you're like, "I know my wife's fuck wig." Yeah, <laughs> well, it was there. Hit, yeah. It was there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, if you see Aunt Lita videos, that was my wife's fuck wig. That- <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. No, yeah. Again, I just want to make sure. Obviously, we got Dolly out there. Of course, we already mentioned patron it. saint, the ult- the ultimate, the ultimate Venn diagram yeah. fucking representative Without of fancy question. and trash is fucking Queen Dolly Parton. Fuck yeah. So yeah, uh, royalty. That's pretty much it about wigs. And so we'll be right back after this with uh, Professor Cho Pro Cho on the subject of the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Right after this. I got paid. This episode is brought to you by Car Shield, who makes it easy and affordable to protect my car from expensive repairs, and that's just for starters. Car Shield is the number one auto protection company in the U.S. and offers protection plans for around a hundred bucks a month. The plan covers more parts than ever before, whether your car has five thousand miles or, like mine, hundred and fifty thousand miles. 
So let us tell you how simple it is to get your car fixed. When you need a repair, you choose the mechanic. We've all got our guy, right? And Car Shields administrators handle the rest. That's it. You don't have to deal with the paperwork or headaches. You're completely taken care of. Same goes if your car breaks down, you're stuck on the side of the road. Plans through Car Shield also include coast to coast roadside assistance. Car Shield administrators are there for you with rental car options and trip reimbursement at, get this, no extra cost. Get coverage today and you'll lock in your price now and it will never go up. That means as long as you own your car, no matter how old it is, you're protected from the rising cost of parts and repairs for your vehicle. Guys, Car Shield helps protect our wallets from expensive car repairs, and they will do the same for you. Go to carshield.com slash podcast to start your plan and lock in your pricing forever. That's carshield.com slash podcast. A deductible may apply. Skew. Are you feeling stuck making minimum payments on your credit card debt? SaveWithConrad.com can help, and you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Oh, and did I mention no house payments for two months? Get rid of your credit card debt and lower your monthly payments right now at SaveWithConrad.com. All right, Pro Cho, let's do it. Uh, another stirring rendition of history of Professor Cho on the subject of the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. So, Franz Ferdinand. Fr- French, yeah, probably. French Ferdinand. Fran- yeah. Uh, oh, anyway. is that what Franz means? French? Yeah, Franz, Franz means French. Everybody knows that. Yeah, I did I know that, but when it's a name, I didn't know. French? Polybou Franz. Franz A. Franz A. Yeah. Polybou Franz A. Franz A. Yeah, but that's Franz A. Right. It's not Franz. Yeah, you're right. Franz. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. We French dumb. We all that dumb. So, all right. What I already know about it. Okay. I know that it started World War One, which don't hit. No, it don't I hit. know that, okay, a guy, I believe his name was Gavrilo Princip, mm-hmm. Princip, whatever, from the Black Hand, this sort of like... Uh, I'm glad whatever, you said that because I forgot covert it. operation thing. Yeah. That it was like they was you know on the up or whatever. They were uh, they were like insurrection e. I yeah, guess yeah, they yeah. were doing whatever adjacent to insurrectionists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Black Hand Gabriel Princip, and they set out to to murder that dude, Franz. And I know that he Princip he tried to murder him earlier in the day tried mm-hmm. to blow him up or something like Damn, that Damn, you're doing it all and then and then that didn't hit that didn't work and then later he was like fuck it i guess i'll have a coffee you know since i couldn't incite world war one right. i guess i'll have an espresso because yeah. i'm european or whatever and he was sitting in a coffee shop and then fucking who drives by yeah franz ferdinand and then he makes a hit well and you know makes a hit for his own purpose he kills him he kills him and then now world war one happens yeah and i wanted Holy to get shit. into that now i don't remember why that happening led to world war one or none of that shit but that's the stuff that i know about that well i'm gonna read the background in a second but i do think it's interesting that like we like i don't say everyone knows that like yeah the assassination of french uh Archduke Franz Ferdinand is what started World War One. Like a lot of people know that, not everybody, but even among the people who do know that, we still kind of don't. It's not really common knowledge, and that's kind of weird to me because World War One and World War Two are such these huge things, and like here's this event that like is the reason that both of them right. essentially I, happened. But isn't it I like, feel like I know so much more about World War Two than yeah, World War right. Everybody does because well, of know, the movies. It's like the Terminator Two of wars. Yeah, you for know? sure, it was, it was like the best way one. better than the fucking the sequel was better. As <laughs> well, and it always is because like with the sequel. You know, like in superhero movies, the sequel, it's like, we don't have to do the origin story. We're already fucking right in it. Germany's already been established as a character. No, but on that note, I have since, because I'm with you, Russ, I think almost every American at least is the same way, but I've since found out in recent years that like World War I, turns out it didn't hit. No, it didn't hit. But no, World War I was like brutal and horrific. Probably worse. And like... 
uh, there's a lot more footage of World War II. Yeah, right. right. That's a huge part of it. And also, World War II had Hitler, it had Thanos. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had yes. their Thanos or Voldemort yeah, yeah. or whatever. But Bob like, Dylan, World yeah. War One is the origin story of why he becomes Thanos and shit. You right, know what I'm right. saying? Like, that's prequel. A, like World War One is prequel. <laughs> World War One is like Iron Man or, you yeah. know, Iron Man 2 or Avengers or whatever. It's the first team up. And then we're building to fucking Thanos, which is Hitler. But like without, you know, we talked about on the last episode with like if uh, or a couple episodes ago, whatever. I don't know the timeline. If Edward the Eighth never abdicates, we don't know who Elizabeth is really, and the world is completely right. different. Yeah, and we get into like butterfly flapping its wings. But like, if World War One never happens, a there literally can't be a World War Two because that would have just been World War One. Yeah, that's just how that works. That's how. So even if that was going to happen, it would have just been considered. But like, it probably wouldn't have. Do you think if it never happened that the Second World War would just? Which I know what you're saying. It might not have happened at all. But would it just be the World War? Yeah, or the yeah. Great War? Because you can't have World end War all wars. Without two. Matter right. of fact, before World War Two, they didn't call World War One. They World called, War. It was I the war think it was to end all like, wars. The war to end all wars, or the Great War. But you know what's funny about that is now that the two have happened. Yeah, we are like waiting on World War Three, three. Yeah. because you know of that. I mean? yeah, yeah. Because there like, has the to be a trilogy. The minute, we yeah. know yeah, that a right. trilogy has yeah. to yeah. happen. The yeah. world like, might end because of OCD. Yeah. yeah, everybody that is a fan of the fucking Andrew Garfield Spider, Spider-Mans is like, we've got to get a three because there's yeah. it has to be a what, trilogy. There's a famous quote about World War Three that the internet has always attributed to Albert Einstein, so it probably wasn't him who right. said it, or at least I've seen it from Albert Einstein. It was definitely sure, a black guy. Sure, someone else actually said it, I'm assuming, but it was, uh, I do not know with what weapons World War Three will be fought, mm-hmm. but World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones. Right. Because we, you know, that's just yeah, dark. Right. But we're gonna be but cavemen. at the same time, I'm sure that somebody thought that about World War One and Two. I don't know, dude. I feel like Ford A bomb came out. Yeah, right. People Nobody... didn't think about wars that way. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Because the A bomb is that the shit standard happened, the, ja- now. the Japanese were like, "Hey, y'all, this some serious shit." Right. Because like the A bomb is the standard. Now yeah, it's fucking yeah. We so, went so far beyond that. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like it fucks me up. Like with the Ukraine and uh, and the yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. No, I know. We ain't got to get into all I that. Know, I'm just, <laughs> but you, Let's no, stay on World War One. Yeah. yeah. So World War One, right? But, but it just again, it just blows my mind that like you know I'm reading a lot of this shit and like I knew that it was Franz Ferdinand mainly because like and and frankly the first time that I learned who Franz Ferdinand was, was because of the band, sincerely. Yeah. Like, I'd Great probably song. heard him before, but the band Take came out. out. Great and I was like, I was like, oh, it's a band? That's not one dude named Franz Ferdinand? They go, oh, no, their name for the Archduke who started World War One Because of him, it started World War One. I was like, oh, shit. And then I looked at it, and I was like, why don't we talk about this more? That's a fucking wild thing, which it was just one isolated incident in history. But here's the background from Shout em Out, the culture trip.com. Uh, the background before I get into the actual assassination. So, in 1914, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was considering a number of changes to uh, the organization of its territory. Only a few years before, in 1908, it had annexed Bosnia and Herz- Her- Herzegovina, Herzegovina mm-hmm. and heir to the Habsburg throne, Franz Ferdinand, was supporting an initiative called Trialism, which would see the Slavic lands combined into a third part of the monarchy. This was unacceptable to a number of groups, probably the Bosnians. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, dude, they stayed annex and stuff. And then they were like, like, annex, what? Annex is a funny word for like, take your shit, shit right. and make it's it such a nice shit. word. Yeah, right. well, like, we're just no, annexing We're just going to annex Super them. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you mean fucking destroy and colonialize them almost every war that has been started is of course because of someone trying to annex to someone else's land Mm -hmm. and every time it happens it's like how are there even two sides to this argument? Right, like you ought not do that. You, like even you ought not annex. And they're and they're, we need to stop annex. And their thought process is always like, but you don't understand. They don't hit. They need us to right. do all this stuff. And it's like, 
yeah, you think that, but they no, would. No, it'll hit for them. It'll hit for them to be annexed. They'll and, love it. And also, you know, thinking about which, like with all this going, which is clearly colonization and stuff like that, which Austria Hungary is doing, which Britain is the absolute number one best mm-hmm. at of all time. Mm-hmm. The go. We've got Puerto Rico, right? We do. And that's clearly a colony of America. That's a great football play, by the way. Puerto Rico? The annexation of Puerto Rico. Oh, I don't know what that is. You see the little giants? Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. That's but I the, forgot the about that. Of Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Holy that was shit. a trick play at the end. I totally forgot about yeah, it. I haven't baby. seen that movie since I was yeah. a kid. That's fucking phenomenal. I'm sorry. What were you going to no, say no, about that, it? No, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm definitely about to go watch the little giants again. So we've got Puerto Rico, and that's like, we. everybody knows, like, that's America Junior or whatever. Like, that's one of, it's us, but it ain't a state, but it's definitely one of our territories. So that's our colony. Mm-hmm. Does it kind of is it kind of weird to you that like we don't have way more of those that are like like we, we had a few more we do but like we don't brag about them like well, I think it became a thing where it's like you're you not, not brag, brag about, about your colonies but like, like we got Guam and American Samoa and the U S Virgin Islands yeah that's true which those used to be Britons and then we got them right like the Virgin Islands yeah. used to it's be fun. they're just like trading trading cards here you go you for take fucking, the savages yeah, yeah for the rich whites but like isn't it weird that like we don't have like there's not a little like is there a little America in Afghanistan right now. You're talking about what do you mean, little like Chinatown? Or yeah, what you, like we. I mean, we fucking went over there and we got yeah, their shit in yeah. Iraq. Well, like, I, well, I don't know about now. Like, how are they not colonies of us? I don't right know now? about now, but but like military bases and stuff for years. Like, there definitely was like pockets yeah, there's, of America in Afghanistan. Yeah, I'm just it's like I'm just surprised that like we don't have that shit going on with the American flag in Iraq and Afghanistan and Iran because like. We're doing the same shit. I, I think really Trey's think right. It's military bases. It's because you're well, not it's, supposed it's to. It's military bases, and also I think it's because the world collectively reached a point where it was like, don't you mm. could still do that, right? Like, because we still do that. Right. Like, you could still colonize and build an empire and stuff, but you can't openly acknowledge it. You anymore. have to call it right. annexing. But yeah, that, right. that's letting. Yeah. I mean, that, which is letting us off the hook. A lot, Ooh, yeah, buddy. We stay letting ourselves. Well, off I'm the just hook. saying, like, you know, we're we're doing the same shit that England used to do because we learned it from them, you know. But like, we don't. Yeah, it's. I don't know. You don't see like we don't have some prince walking over to Afghanistan, just like, oh, look at him. This is for them. But like, we always. We always insert the democracy and are just like, oh no, they would love no, this freedom. Freedom, it's freedom. Not what democracy. we do yeah. is spread freedom. To the rest of the world that needs it. By killing Show. everybody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My bad. They need freedom. We bring it to them. What do you want me to say? <laughs> no, it's Hollywood. It's our so, yeah, we got a cultural victory is what it is. So this was, like I said, unacceptable to a number of groups, including the Black Hand, a secret Serbian nationalist society. Uh, the, the word nationalist, man, really, really gets put through. I feel like anytime you see nationalists, like... That means they don't hit. Yeah, and like in, <laughs> but I'm saying like the word itself, you're like, yeah, you should be for your nation and stuff like that. But like when you really get down to the brass tacks of it, it's just like, ugh, it's just complete xenophobia. Everything should be our nation. And, yeah, right, exactly. If you ain't our nation, you don't hit. Right, right. In the months leading up to June 1914, the group began to lay the foundations for the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, uh, working to get a hold of weapons and training those who would carry out the plan. A young Bosnian Serb, sounds like a slur, named Dan, how'd you say it? Dan- Danilo Ilic? Was that the guy you said? No, I said Gavrilo Princip. Oh, yeah, that's the different... guy who actually fired the shot. Okay, yeah, all right. And this is the guy that was in charge of the operation and the six men who were chosen to carry it out. Okay, okay so all right. that is the background on why these motherfuckers are trying to even do this shit. So, Franz Ferdinand himself, and I feel like I keep saying this with a lot of these dudes, that he was actually painted in a pretty good light. Like, he was a, they, they said he was a pretty warm guy. He loved his family. Like, he wasn't one of those just fucking, uh, it was autocrats. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't really an autocratic, motherfucker. 
granted, everything that his country was trying to do military wise was fucking shit and horrible. But he himself was just like, let's keep the peace. Let's fucking it. He was also a general in the army because back then the president or king actually had to serve and shit like that, which like nowadays, like, dude, like, can you imagine one of our presidents actually on the front lines of something or even even in the country when a war was going on? But back then, yeah, I mean, well, you know, our president is also the commander in chief of the armed forces, right? But, but he's not going to, right? The but front they, but they nothing. did that shit. Yeah. Like back then, like George Washington was the leader of America, yeah. and he was also on the front of the boat holding mm-hmm. the goddamn flag with his leg up like this. Yeah, showing him calves off. Leg like, up, look yeah. at how much him calves. That's apparently have. that was the hitness way to ride in a boat back then. Would you like If you hit, mm. you was on a boat. You had to have your leg up like this. Look here, that with, shit was an your, Instagram post with your chin. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you right. Yeah. So Franz Ferdinand was that dude, and he also was in a similar situation to Edward to Harry, uh, wherein he was wanting to marry this woman who did not. She wasn't from royal lineage. And it didn't really hit for anybody. Her name was Sophia. And so he actually had one of those Monta, whatever it was I said, marriages where they were like, you can marry her, but your kids are not going to be the heir to the throne. Just so you know. And he was like, can I still marry her? And they were like, yeah. And he was like, fuck it. This is my lady. You know, he's in love with her. How much did like legitimate noble women not hit back in the Apparently, because they were just like, like, all the noble dudes were looking around like, that ain't it. Well, think about this. Like. How would they know how to suck a dick or, or, like, do any of that? Like they, Well, they, sure, now that you put it that way, yeah. Well, I yeah, mean, yeah, frankly, yeah. I'm just saying, like, they were grown up and they had this whole prim and proper life, and, like, there yeah. was never a time for them to, like, go behind a back alley and smoke butts of cigarettes yeah. with somebody and jack somebody off. Yeah, like, like her gravy don't hit. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, they wouldn't hit at all. So why would you, like, you don't, I'm not going to say, you don't, you don't, like, a lady like that is not a woman who is good to be fucked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm just... Listen. The Are prim we, and the proper, they're great. They look good on your arm and stuff like that. But she ain't gonna smoke a cigarette while she fingers your butthole. Every king wants a dirty whore. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, every dude that's coming of age is like, yeah, but like, what, like... Great. You you come from a noble family, but like, you don't. they literally don't even know how to like... They've never been... This is getting gross, but like they've never been fingered. They've never, like none of that shit. Like they weren't allowed to get dirty. So like, of course, you're going to go for the less noble fucking lady who, and apparently her pussy was so good that they were like, by the way, your kids can't be king. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. Right. Like right, this yeah. is my lady right here. So uh, he's with her. Right. And so all this bullshit with the Bosnian shit's going on the black hand like they've kind of got some secret intel about that but they don't know exactly what's going to happen it was reported they were like friends we don't know that you really need to go on this streetcar ride you know what i mean uh which did, didn't they tell jfk that they were like well no, we kind of got some shit and he was just like ah fuck it like let me let me ride i don't know baby maybe well, well that was the deal with him where they were like ah tensions are high and as- back then like assassination like Ronald Reagan getting shot was the last time that shit has really ever happened. And mm. that was a, a while, it was a long time since then before. And he, and he didn't die. But like in this period, in the late 19th, early 20th century, assassination was just some shit. They were just like, yeah, you'll probably get assassinated mm-hmm. today. Like if you go out and you're this dude, it's a good chance that you yeah. will get assassinated. Yeah. His security forces were just like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You might get assassinated. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to go on this ride. Our cars and, don't even have roofs on them. Like, yeah, right. We can't help it. So Sophia, as I told you, she's not technically allowed to like take any royal ranks and her kids aren't going to be, you know, heir apparent. So she, in most situations, like when they went to have dinner, she wasn't allowed to be with him or sit with him because mm. that's like, that's where a royal person would be. And so she's not allowed. So normally, under normal circumstances, she would have never been allowed to be with him in this car ride. There is a little loophole, though, whereas if he is acting under his 
military persona and not his king persona, she could be with him. So when he's going out to do this ride that day and they're going to try to get like, uh, like, hey, everything hits. We're good. Don't worry about it. The black hand, eh, this all Bosnia stuff. Yeah, we're going to annex them, but everything's fine. When he goes out to Rowler, he he basically convinces all these people. He's like, I'm acting as military here, so my wife could be with me. That's fine, right? And they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. So he's going out on this ride. All the black hand motherfuckers are like, all right, this is our moment. We know where this dude is going to be. And as you said earlier, this one motherfucker uh, throws a bomb mm-hmm. like at the car. But unfortunately for him, it banked off the car and went directly under the car behind him and blew that motherfucker smooth up. Mm -hmm. So they're just sitting there driving. Boom, some shit blows up. Obviously, he knows, like, I'd say that they weren't trying to kill them. You know what I mean? That's probably probably meant for me. You see that, right? It's like, they bombed Larry? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck did Larry do? It's weird do? that somebody would bomb Larry. <laughs> but, hey, what are you going to do? So, so they, a couple people in the car die, and a couple of them aren't dead, and they get rushed off to the hospital, right? They just continue the car ride, because I guess for a moment he was just like, oh, Larry must have pissed off the black hand. Yeah. What the fuck was this? So they go on for a while, and then the car ride ends, and then Franz, being, again, the soft-hearted man that I said that he was earlier, he, they were like, okay, listen, your majesty, there's clearly an attack going on. They are clearly coming after you. Yeah. We need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And he's just like, he's just like, but I I must, I, how do they talk? He talks to Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? I guess, right. yeah. Austro hungry, yeah. yeah. We we have to get to the hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get to the hospital. Yeah. Get to the hospital. Larry, Larry, get them out. Get them out, Larry. Larry. Get out, Larry. 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 I hadn't even thought about this part of it, but yeah, he would definitely sound like Schwarzenegger. So he's like, he's telling him, he's like, Larry is the hospital. I'm down with Christopher Walken now, but he, but he's like, look, I know we need to get out of here, but like, I, it's my duty, like as you know, King or Archduke or whatever, like, I've got to go check on these motherfuckers. Like, they were clearly blown up because of me. Mm -hmm. And he felt extreme guilt over all of this. And he's like, we got to go back. And they were like, I don't think that's a good move, but, like, if that's what you want to do, that's what we're going to do. So they, the driver, by the way, is just outside, and he's not informed of any of this stuff. All he knows is when he gets back in the car, I take him back. That's all he knows. Mm. So they're like, we're going to go to the hospital. But they don't communicate that as well to the driver. So they get in the car, and the driver just goes back down the same road. Yeah, this is how you get there. Right, this is how you get there. That's where we're going. Which realistically would have been a decent move because the people that were trying to explode him were like, well, he's not going to come back mm-hmm. You know where mm-hmm. where we were. They get about halfway down there, and Franz Ferdinand is just like, wait a minute, we're hold on now. We're going, this is the same fucking road we're on to. This ain't how you get to the hospital. And they were like, what? And the driver's like, oh, shit, we're going to the hospital? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> okay. And so he goes to- I thought we was going back to the murder spot. Yeah, I, you know, well, I, yeah. that's what we're doing. Check on, the, check on Larry, mm-hmm. you know? See his blood spot. So he goes to turn around, and like back then in a car, that was like a whole thing, like turning around- it wasn't yeah, like you right. just, it wasn't yeah. like you were just like, Err. so like there's this whole thing going on and it kind of causes a commotion. And like, because of that, everybody's just like, wait, 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 hold shit. That's Franz Ferdinand. You know what I'm saying? And they go to turn up this other road and they turn up this other road. And who just happens mm-hmm. to coincidentally, who was walking from that street mm-hmm. to this other street was Gavrilo Princip. Gavrilo Princip. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, who had failed at bombing right. these motherfuckers. Yeah, right. And then he turns around, and he's just like, oh, shit. Fucking fumble. Yeah. Pick it up. Yeah. Run in. He just turns around with his pistol. Pop, pop, pop. Just fucking hits Franz Ferdinand right in the jugular. Hits fucking Sophia right in the stomach. Kills them motherfuckers. Smooth dead on the spot. So a couple butterfly flapping its wings. A, if he'd have just not gone, period, as everyone was telling him not to do, this would have been fine. But also, if he had of, after a fucking bombing took place, thought, 
I better get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. None of this would have taken place. And because of that, and all the Bosnian shit, uh, so Bosnia does this, and then Hungary is like, we're going to fucking war with Bosnia. And I'm probably getting a lot of this wrong, but then Russia is like, oh, Bosnia, we got you, mm-hmm. right? And then Germany is like, fuck that, Hungary, we got y'all. Mm-hmm. And then because of just like those four countries mm-hmm. and how the axis and the powers fucking be, mm-hmm. everybody then has to jump in because it's like, you know, if you're at, if me and you are at a bar yeah. and somebody starts hitting me, you got to hit them. Yeah. You're my boy. Yeah. So all that and happened. I hit that guy, and then their boys got to hit, hit me. Right. And then everybody in the bar is in a fucking fight. Yeah, right. And that's how it happened, and that's why fucking World War One got started, because I mean, this motherfucker was stupid and couldn't take a bomb as a warning to get the fuck off the streets. I mean, I feel like you nailed that. Did I? Yeah. Crushed. I, so. I hope so. I was The probably, way you sort of described the bar wanna, fight nature of World War One. You want to talk to my wife? On, Hashtag yeah, pro cho. In, yeah, definitely. In, this is a segment. Hey, yes. Amber, you're on putting on airs. Oh, really? Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, I just got home from working. Oh, yeah? How was that? Fun? It was loads of fun. You want to tell everybody at putting on airs uh, how much you love us and how much they should subscribe to this show? As always, for sure. Y'all are the best. Well, say stuff that hits. You know, I don't have things that hit right now. I'm pretty worn out. What are you about to do? I'm about to stretch my back out, honestly. Ooh, I wish I was there to do that. You know there, it is. Uh-huh. there it is. That would be very nice. nice. You about to get drunk? It's Saturday. You want to eat some boiled peanuts, have some fucking uh, have white cloth? I've huh. hammered down three Bud Light seltzers. Oh, on the way home? Since I got home, yeah. Nice. How long you been home? Ten minutes. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. Well, I love you, but we're recording, and uh, so I'll talk. Love you. Okay. Talk to you later. Bang. Bang. Love it, Mrs. Cho. Mrs. Mrs. Cho. Cho. Pro Cho. Hashtag Pro Cho. Pro Cho. All right. Well, as Amber said, like, subscribe, download, Mm -hmm. tell all your friends. If you're watching this on YouTube, that's fantastic. But if you would also go over to your podcast app, please subscribe, download, do all that stuff. Leave us a five-star review. Sincerely, it takes you two seconds, and it helps us so immensely. Share this YouTube clip and uh, share the love. Tell your friends, because if you like this, I bet your friends do too. And enjoy this segment. Of clearing the airs. Clearing the airs, here one, it comes. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Royalty and rednecks are alike. They both like cutting and picking fights. Biscuits and baked beans where they don't belong. Sit on down with Corey and Trey and learn some fancy shit today. We'll laugh a little even when they're wrong. They'll take you to a magical place where if you call someone a cut, nobody cares. They keep it debonair at putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs. Little red me lips are. Oh, makes me look sort of sickly, don't it? I don't know. Might be a sign of. You've been drinking Kool Aid? No, it's because I've been drinking Kool Aid, yeah. I know oh, why right. it is. Yeah, it just sort of makes me look like um, a dead person, you know, when they, the funeral, they're like real pale face, and they got the... You'd think that on. they would have made uh, better progress in that field by now, you would I would think. say. No, Because I've think. never seen a corpse that didn't look truly awful and upsetting. Yeah, right. No, I understand. <laughs> I know it's a corpse. Agree. For many of mine, you don't see them because what they did was they blew their head off. So... Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. Going to close Time that, to aren't we? That. Yeah. They don't make a rouge <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Hey, everybody, welcome to <laughs> welcome to clearing the airs. The uh, uh, the uh, addendum portion of the putting on airs podcast that we really appreciate y'all listening to. This week was a doozy. Trey talked about wigs. I talked about the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. And we appreciate all y'all's comments and all the emails that we've been getting at puttingonairs at gmail.com, which, of course, I will get to later in the show. And even though we hound you enough about it, I'm going to say it again. 
Uh, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. It, regardless, we thank you for listening, but if you could subscribe, that'd be great. If you're watching it over at watchpoa.com, uh, share that with your friends, but also go subscribe on some sort of podcast app. Leave us a five-star review. Write something. It could be as simple as, this hits. That's totally fine. It'll take you a couple seconds, but it really, 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 really will mean the world to us. And more importantly, tell a friend and tell that friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, my subject was wigs, but we mostly talked about the dick plague. Um, <laughs> yeah, we did. It's funny because so Russ sent us, he sends us clips like in advance. And it's, I don't know if you've noticed this, and I'm not complaining at all, but almost, because like usually we stick to the show. Like I've got my subject, you've got yours. Of course we go off on tangents from time to time. That's how things work. But Russ exclusively picks out clips when we aren't at all talking about the shit that we're supposed to be talking about on the show. Like, he exclusively I, picks the divergence. I'm, I bet, first of all, those are just often funny, and, I'm, and he thinks they're funny and whatnot. They but are. Also, I bet that those make conveniently concise clips because For sure. they're not, because, like, the... Where it's do a you, full story. Where do you begin? Right. It's self-contained. Yeah. Yeah, like if sure. you're going to – any other clip where we are on topic, it's like, well, where do you cut it out at? Because the True. whole thing is 20 minutes, right? True. And like True. It, it almost kind of has to be an aside. Yeah. To, well, and again, I like wasn't complaining. Clip. But but because of that, like he sent us a clip where we, it was an eight-minute uh, uh, derailment where I was talking about – uh, my Sunday school teacher hitting uh, his dick on a stump, which really tickled me. But I was listening. I go, what the fuck are we talking about here? But I yeah. guess syphilis. Wigs. wigs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. I, it makes yeah, sense. I'm, I'm mad at myself right now because, well, the thing is, it may not even have been this episode because we have uh, we were talking before. We've gotten, a, we, for the first time, have gotten a few episodes at our disposal that we could go ahead and listen to now. But I think I'm going to stop doing that and purposefully only listen to each week's episode um because one of the episodes i listened to i there was a point i know where i it wasn't that we were wrong it's we were trying to think of something and present me was like screaming the you answer fucking idiot at past us like how do you not know that fucking you know and uh but we never <laughs> came up with it and now I've completely forgotten because I didn't write it down or anything. Outside of that, I don't think there was a – I mean, I can't speak for you, you know, Franz Ferdinand, uh, but I don't feel like I fucked anything up too bad with wigs. It's kind of hard well, to get much wrong. I feel like you're just yeah, right. sort of bullshitting about wigs. Yeah, we still know the same amount of stuff about wigs as we did when you started talking. Uh, I So for me, I went, I listened to it twice. I listened to this episode twice for a couple of reasons. Number one, I was trying to find something that I got wrong. And number two, it was just a hilarious episode. And uh, this might sound weird to people, but like me and you are my two favorite comedians. I'm not, I'm not ashamed yeah. to admit that. And we what's great. Hit. And we've told, we've told this before and it's true because we do so many of these, we do them in batches. We're often drinking and we do other things. I genuinely forget about the stuff that we talk about. So it is hilarious to me. Like, I don't know what is coming, but I listened right. to it twice and I'm going to have to say, now I'm sure that we're going to get emails at putting on airs at gmail.com in places where I was completely wrong. But like, I feel like this was probably my best professor Cho from an intellect standpoint, from a wrapping it all up together I really think I nailed it. It was a really good segment. We had fun. So, again, I welcome your emails at puttingonairs at gmail.com. But I I don't know anything now that I didn't know then, if that makes sense. That's a Toby Keith song, ain't it? It, it is. Uh, I wish I did. Uh, I wish I didn't know now what I didn't know no, then. No, man. I wish, wish I, I could, could start this, this whole thing over thing again. Over again if yeah. I found it. Boom, and I wouldn't know oh, how it ends. ends. You'd still have my heart, heart in the in your, hand. your hand. I'd still I'd look, still like, look a like a fool in front of your friends. Yeah. Oh, hit. yeah, I did hit. We're going to get sued or whatever, probably. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, so it def have this yeah, the algorithms, the algorithm is definitely going to pick that one up. Which, we hey, we had our first... Uh, 
Was it our first thing that we got struck from uh, WatchPOA.com this week, the National Geographic shit? Mm-hmm. I we got so. anybody out there Couldn't that is internet. It. Anybody out there that's internet savvy, I need y'all to hook us up because we've talked a million times about how there's dudes that do reaction videos where they play the fucking clips from other shit and they're not getting pulled down. And I know are they, that these people are monetizing because otherwise, what the fuck? What are they doing it for? I agree with that part, but are they though? Like, are yeah. like I don't ever watch them. Are there ads on them? I don't if know. If there maybe... aren't ads on them, then there's your answer right there. If yeah, there right. are ads on them, I don't have a fucking clue how they're doing it. But well, anyway, somebody that's reach out to us. Shit. Um, yeah, so, yeah, somebody reach out to us if you do know. Got a couple emails here, airmail as it were, putting on airs at gmail.com. Send us your shit. Uh, this is for subject line MMA and boxing. The uh, person's name, hey, spelled just like you, Trey Delay Hey. Uh, let's see. Deal soft a hey delay hey yeah right delay hey <clears throat> excuse me try delay hey, hey? try try delay very hey musical it that's sounds a like very Robin Hood fucking name yeah yeah Oodalali Oodalati yeah yeah so uh, hey Cho and hey Cho and Trey per the MMA conversation you said boxing and MMA were barbaric um, how do you feel Cho about I, that's true. Well, but I also said, I don't, they, dude, they are. You can <laughs> yeah. like them all you want, but they're barbaric. I said I like oh, them. That's the, that's the sweet science, buddy. <laughs> you said uh, boxing and MMA were barbaric. How do you feel about deathmatch wrestling, if uh, if either of you have seen any? Love the main pod, Bubba, and really miss Screen Door. Much love. Trade delay. Hey, I don't think I know what deathmatch wrestling is, unless you're talking about like ECW, like, barbed wire tack tack shit and like of course i think that's barbaric but like you know it is a work oh i, I mean guess. dude i don't have a fucking clue what that is i mean yeah unless, no, I, like you said, I wouldn't even have thought of that but as soon as you said that i remember i love that movie the wrestler with mickey rourke and yeah he has one of those matches in it and there's that dude Necro something or something yeah he's real. You know, he's real he's real i about to say he's like just he really looks like ari shafir guys and he's like famous for being that, du being one of those dudes. Meaning, like he just like dives into pits of fucking nails and tacks and staples yeah. his forehead and all this Crazy. fucking barbed wire, whack, wild ass shit. Um, and if yeah, if you mean that, yeah, that shit sure is wild. It's and I would, it's barbaric. I would call but it, it barbaric, but I don't. If you if you mean something else, I don't know. If nah, Joe don't know, I don't know. We're wrestling. I, I, I have no idea. Uh, this is from a uh, uh, subject line suggestion. This is from Brian Grissom. You mentioned him on the Princess Die show, but you should learn about Lord Louis Mountbatten. The guy's wild. His wife was wilder. The India and Pakistan thing is still being fought over today. YouTube has a hell of a doc. I'll try to send it to you. I, I've talked about Louis Mountbatten quite a bit, haven't I? Is Louis Mountbatten the one that got exploded on a boat? Yeah, pretty sure he's the one that got exploded on the boat. I think. If so, if he's, he's the come one that up got a lot. On a boat. Also, you did a whole. Here's the thing. Again, I don't know if it's an episode that hasn't come out yet <laughs> right. or, or what, because we yeah. listen to them ahead of time. And, and, the way, and the time, the way time works in my head regarding this show is just so fucked up because we uh -huh, record them in too. batches forever ago. Then the schedule comes out and we get them. And it just it's so hard to keep up with up here. But you do. Time has been our enemy for a while. Yeah. You do a whole Professor Cho segment on specifically him getting exploded on a boat. Yeah. If it's if that's Louie, it might be his daddy. The guy that got exploded on a boat might be his daddy's Louie or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but you talk well, about way, a mount batten getting exploded on a boat for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and look forward to that, everybody. Um, subject line Unless here. Unless you heard all... it four weeks ago. And then you know, <laughs> I hope you liked it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Subject line, all alike. This is from Louise Hope. <laughs> Something you said in the Fish and Diana episode made me think you've overlooked the best shared feature of all. I refer, of course, to the linguistic phenomenon known inaccurately as dropping the G. That is making, taking the word making and making it making. You know what I mean? That's what, how we spell our episodes, the N with the apostrophe or whatever. Participles yeah, yeah. In, end in N rather than N spelled ing. Uh, in the course of the 20th century, there has been some forcible leveling of upper crust English dialects, but there was a time when the La-Di-Da folks would, 
would ostentatiously talk about hunting, shooting, fishing, and riding, as do some not so la di da folks uh, one could name. I think that's interesting. I don't know if you do a whole segment on it, but yeah, like uh, they, we, and that's where our language came from. So that really makes sense. You know what yeah, I mean? but aren't they saying that 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 that's over now? That they yeah, that I guess because they, they don't want to sound too much like us. You know? Yeah, right. I, I mean, that's how I interpreted that. But and it's why I'm thinking like you know you would go um go out for a spot of hunt hunting 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 shooting fishing fishing cooking. I don't know. It's weird. It doesn't. Uh, doesn't sound particularly fancy to me. I believe that no. person, um, but yeah, yeah, right. That's interesting. Subject line: All about fucking squirrels. From Rodney McDonald. I love you guys. I've been listening since not long before you started doing the podcast, and have tried to catch everything y'all do. Appreciate that, Rodney. I recommend your book to everyone who will listen. I think it's one of uh, one of the best books, uh, and one that had to be written. You guys did it right. That's awesome. Thank you. I also listened to Thank another you, podcast, Ryan. which happens to be done by a couple other guys who live in Atlanta who happened to do an episode earlier this year on squirrels. Been meaning to send it earlier Uh-oh. so you can hopefully find the answer to the conundrum and move on with your goddamn life. In short, the answer <laughs> is Corey is right. Sort of. No. I'll leave it at I'll leave no. it at that and maybe you will listen to the episode and decide for yourself. I've attached the episode here, so I'm definitely gonna check that out. Keep up the good work. Being from Georgia myself with a stepfather from Tennessee, I can relate to so many things that y'all talk about. Uh that is from okay. Rodney. Just so you know, I've gotten DMs from people purporting to be in the sciences, mm-hmm. like biology related stuff like that, people who you would think would know. Not just podcast hosts telling me how right I am because okay. of the because of the science lack of cortical development in the brain of a squirrel that would uh, necessitate uh, that would be necessary for those types of higher order cognitive functions like that, mm-hmm. and they simply lack the capacity, which is what I was drunkenly saying all those many moons ago. But anyway, yeah, we'll check this podcast out, too. That's fine. Sure. I just, yeah, uh, teach their own. Also, he said sort of. So Yeah, like, right. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, I think that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I don't know. But well, I'll check the podcast out for sure. This is a, also subject line, Squirrel Fight from Robert Bird. Let me tell you, I've been hooked ever since the squirrel fight. I was listening with the podcast app, then I heard the fight, then I had no choice but to binge all of the YouTube airstreams. Uh, I got pulled into it, and I now haven't talked. I haven't talked to my girl in a day and a half, and she's looking at me sideways with the taxidermy fox eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Then I asked myself, "What am I doing?" Uh, is this my life? Then the Colonel and Lord hit me with the Monsa Musa nugget. It hits for country black dudes too. Skew, we're out here. There is a little pepper in your gravy. Keep up the good work. Love Man, it. As I mean, he already know. As Mister Bird already knows, we have espoused the virtues of receiving compliments from black mm-hmm. men on the podcast before. So I'm sure he knows how much that means to us. So thank you means so much to us and i love i've never heard you got a little pepper in your gravy but that's super hits for me uh yeah. for for many reasons all right now last one here this is subject line in reference to the notre dame episode Ooh, i bet i got something wrong this is from jen steinbrick hey guys love the show i was born and raised in southeast louisiana until i was 24 and now living in southern new england for the past 12 years so i understand being a redneck fish out of water it's funny and comforting to know I'm not the only one. I'd love to see you live if you ever come to Rhode Island. Just be careful because these people can't fucking drive. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> it just sucks because I, w- I was just in New Hampshire, in Rhode- and I'm, yeah. I'm going to be in Connecticut tomorrow night. But as you are hearing this, p- listeners, You've been there. I will have been in Connecticut like four days ago. So I've been in New England recently, but that's okay. Yeah, a, we'll be back a in the future. 
I know you like learning fun facts, so I have an interesting one for you. Notre Dame burned down on April 15th, 2019. This calendar day is a bit cursed, as besides it being tax day, it was also the day of the Boston Marathon bombing, 2013, the Sheffield, England soccer riot, 96 dead, 1989, the sinking of the Titanic, 1912, Abe Lincoln's death, 1865, It did give us Da Vinci and Seth Rogen, however, whom I love, but some might say is another tragedy. (laughs) I did have an idea for a spooky episode as Halloween gets closer. A broad topic, but maybe discuss the overlap of fancy-ass funerals. Southern Christians love fancy caskets and mausoleums, and rich people get monuments even as far back as the pyramids. And for Professor Cho, maybe look into Marie Lavu and the history of voodoo. I'm into that. And Corey and Trey can kiss both of our asses because squirrels are my favorite animal and my next tattoo. They are intelligent and lovable and deserve respect. Much much love from your imported coon ass, Jen. It's never going away, dude. It's never going away. Because of how insane all these people are. (laughs) I'm not... I never advocated for just fucking hurling squirrels into traffic. (laughs) Or off bridges or anything. I never said that. They are cute. They're fucking precious. I got a whole fucking family. According to Corey, I've got a generational dynasty of squirrels living in my yard that have been here since the 50s or whatever. But, and I don't want anything bad to happen to them, none of that means that they hold funerals and fucking write sonnets to their loved ones and all this bullshit that y'all are acting like they do. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, okay, it's fine. What do you think about April 15th? That's fucking kind of crazy, isn't it? That's a one week after my birthday. Uh, that's the first thing I thought of. Uh, my birthday that's, not noteworthy I mean, in any way. I think, I feel like Kurt Cobain killed himself on or around my birthday. <laughs> checks out. <laughs> it's yeah, a bad month. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is wild. Thank you so much, uh, Jen, and thank you to everybody who emailed us. And by the way, as as you probably know, because you're sitting, some of you are sitting there, and I didn't read your email. It's not because I'm not going to get to it; it's just because we don't have time. I'm serious. We get Kurt. so many emails a day, and I'm so That's appreciative awesome. of it. it. Is so like again, uh, I literally have to filter through and be like, I'll get to this one, or oh, that was kind of similar. Like it's crazy. Yeah, Kirk Cobain killed himself on my eighth birthday. So. <laughs> hits well <laughs> yeah, thank sure. y'all thank y'all for listening to this week stay tuned for next week it's going to be another banger man trey of course don't know what it is and won't until the day before we love y'all email us at putting on airs at gmail.com like subscribe download tell all your friends and uh hey go see trey on tour trey and if you Please. haven't check out my check out my newsletter slash blog slash publication at cory we love y'all and we'll see you next time skew skew